motorcycle is whatever you want to make it. Turn it on, you can give yourself a real thrill. What's going on guys? This is Carl with the Racer Red channel. I wanted to do a quick review of the 2018 Husqvarna TE250. I did one review on this bike before, but that was over a year ago, so I wanted to do another one since I have a little bit more of an understanding of how this bike responds. And uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about it. I've replaced a lot of stuff like the exhaust, um, but it does come with a nickel plated exhaust. Durability wise, it's not the greatest. That stock exhaust will dent pretty easily. However, it is nickel plated, so it won't um, discolor or anything like that. So this bike does come with a skid plate, as you can see. Um, the skid plate does not cover the linkage, although I added a linkage guard on there. This model is a six speed transmission. It's a wide ratio and it'll do approximately 90 miles per hour and it will absolutely crawl in first gear so first and second are really close together third is way out there and third through sixth are i would say medium comes with a headlight stock 2.25 gallon gas tank which is plenty for those long rides. I've taken this bike 86 miles in one day before. Granted, I was coasting down a lot of the mountains, so, because I knew I was a little bit lost. It comes with a backup Kickstarter, which is amazing. I love that feature. Again, this is a 2018, so it's the last carbureted model. And it has an electric start, so it has the magic button, as well as the kickstart, which I think is where it's at. It has Magura brakes. These are hydraulic brakes, front and rear, and they work really, really good. They have a good progressive feel. And as you can see, this bike will, will take you where you need it to. It's kind of the end of the road right here. I couldn't find the trail, so I decided to end the ride right here. <clears throat> Comes with a kickstand, which is a must. An O-ring chain, which lasts next to forever. <laughs> it does really, really well as far as longevity. And that goes for this whole bike. I've had no issues as far as longevity. This pops off, this side cover pops off without tools. And you can get to your air filter right there which makes it very nice and again it does have the Magura front brake it comes stock with pro taper handlebars which are very nice I've never had these bend at all and it comes with a trail computer headlight switch right here you can keep track of your hours your mileage all that stuff with your trail computer this bike has approximately 150 hours on it. And this is probably the best bike that I've ever ridden. Overall, I don't think I've had a better bike. I've never done a rebuild on it, and I've raced the crap out of it. Not only that, but I've raced it in races that it's not designed for. I ran it in some desert races, which is a horrible idea for this model of bike. So... Um, some sand sand races. I did the Sand City 100 on it, which is 100 miles of basically just sand whoops. And um, just brutalized this bike for this last couple of years. I've tried to keep up on maintenance. And, I mean, this bike just keeps on ticking. It runs great. Longevity and durability. I just, I'm very, very impressed with it. The plastics hold up really well. These are actually the stock handguards. They get all scratched up, but they are durable. Comes standard with the DID Dirt Star rims. So that's a really nice feature. I've got tubeless on there right now. I run the IRC M5B on the rear and the Shinko fat tire on the front. It's generally what I run. 
that's not the fat tire, but that's what I run normally. Um, this bike comes standard with uh, AT81s by Dunlop. And those are good tires, they just don't last very long. It has a steel frame, really durable steel frame. I've had a few areas where the paint has started to chip off, but that's to be expected. And it has a composite subframe, which is completely covered up. As you can see right here, you can kind of see it, but it's covered by all the side panels. So that aspect of the bike, I can't really tell you whether it's good or bad. It's just something that Husqvarna did a little bit different than KTM. And these bikes are really just put together so well that it's almost too easy to take care of them. There's really nothing that ever goes wrong with these bikes. So as long as you know basic maintenance, like changing your air filter, keeping good transmission oil in them, and mixing your fuel to a safe amount of oil, then you won't have any issues ever. This bike runs pretty close to new. I just checked the compression and it is very close to, uh, to how it was new, so that is absolutely astonishing com <laughs> considering that I have raced the crap out of it um, in the A class for these desert races and the hard enduro up in northern Idaho, and I've crashed it plenty. Has a radiator guard that kind of doubles as a radiator brace. As you can see, the contact points against the frame and the outer shroud. So when you take an impact, it's going to go from the shroud and somewhat brace it against the frame. It's still plastic. It will probably break eventually if you hit it real hard, but it still does a pretty good job of bracing. There's a lot of stuff on it that isn't stock. And I'll talk a little bit about what I felt needed to be changed or that I wanted to change. So I pretty much demolished my stock exhaust. I put a FMF Gnarly on here, which is a little bit more durable. And then I put a aluminum tusk guard on there, as well as a flange protector, which is the main thing that you need to protect is the exhaust flange coming out of the engine right here. I've gone with this for many reasons, mainly cost and appearance. The This guard costs way less and no guard is going to protect your exhaust completely, so you're going to have to replace the whole thing anyways. And those those uh, carbon fiber ones tend to look pretty ugly pretty quick. I've added the giant loop on there to help me pull out of situations, help other riders to, to grab onto something. Honestly, the best method is to rotate the front tire still anyways. But I have it on there just in case. I have a radiator fan, a Trailtech radiator fan installed. That really helps, and that's a must if you're going to do hard enduro. And then I have an oversized brake pedal installed to help me hit that when I'm bouncing all over the place. That helps quite a bit. Definitely helps quite a bit. I've got the FMF turbine core on the rear. I have tubeless on here right now with IRC M5B tire. That's a great combo. I mean, that's that's a really, really good combo. Generally what I run on the front is a tubeless um, Shinko fat tire. Um, pay no mind what's on there right now. That's not what I normally run. I find that if I run the front fork um, too soft, it'll dive in the corners. And so I, I run it kind of a little bit stiffer than uh, normal but still soft enough to absorb the small impacts, like little rocks. I've added a mud flap for my linkage guard. I just bolted that on. The gearing on this bike is still stock. This is a low profile seat, a little bit shorter than the stock seat. Helps me to uh, dab when I need to. And the grips, 
are just the stock ones. I like those. Those are the ODI lock-on grips. One thing about the Husky that's um, noteworthy is that you can just turn that knob right there to adjust your clickers on the suspension. So compression and dampening can be adjusted right there. You don't need any tools, which is very nice. I'm all about toolless entry into the bike so that you can make small adjustments here or there uh, in order to fit whatever terrain that you're riding in. Again, I run 32 to one Maxima Super M. It's just what I found that works for me. Seems to work really well. Anyways, guys, I can think of nothing else, really. Um, if you guys have any questions, oh, one other thing I do is I remove, I remove those steering head bolts or uh, steering bolts. Those are removed. That can actually cause a crash if you're not careful, so just be aware. I've, um, it's nice for when you're doing single track and you really need to go through some tight stuff. It's really helped me out quite a bit when I'm doing the tight terrain, but um, it is to the point now where if you lock it up all the way to one side, it can really, if you're going any speed at all, you're gonna have yourself a face plant. All right, I think that's about it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.